What's good, everybody? This is Khalif here, and it is finally time for me to talk to you all about my Starfield review. I have been playing the game for two weeks already, have, gosh, I'm almost 60 plus hours into the game, and I have to say, this is one of the better games I've ever seen out of Bethesda. I want to get something out of the way immediately, because I know a lot of folks don't have time to walk through and listen to seven hours of conversation. Is this the best game that Bethesda has ever put out? The answer is absolutely yes. Is this game perfect? The answer is absolutely no. <laughs> but I think over the course of our review and over the course of my thoughts that I'll share with you, I wanna go over this in a different way. I'm not gonna do this in the usual way where you go through each small piece and say, you know, what was the story like and what were the graphics like and what were those things? I wanna talk to you all about some of the systems that I think you'll come into most contact with and my thoughts about those. I think those will be the parts that will be the most kind of beneficial to you at home. I think, you know, their story will be different than mine. The way that people kind of go through their course of, you know, who they picked and why they picked their their, their character and all that stuff for their background are just going to be different. So I'm not going to go into a bunch of that. I'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the review, but there are a couple of systems that I definitely want to talk to you about because I think they are the most important. And I'll give some flavor towards, again, the end of the video to talk about some of my overall thoughts and some of the little pieces that we did miss or didn't talk about in the beginning. So super excited about this massive love to our friends over at Bethesda again for giving us early code for this and I think this is going to be a game that is going to be the talk of the internet and talk of the gaming industry for a lot of the months that we have going into the rest of this year and I think Bethesda has done a really fantastic job so with that said please enjoy our, our review and check out the first layer of what we want to talk about and that's about combat one of the biggest question marks for Starfield for me was always around combat. As a big Bethesda fan, one of the kind of blessing and curses of such a big world was that some of the systems within it didn't necessarily get the care and love that they deserved. One of those used to be in the Fallout series, gun combat. Gun combat was really held together by two different things. One was the idea of what your guns were supposed to do and the actual way that those guns work. So you would wind up having a ton of shots that you would shoot and sometimes miss, and they were based on a lot of different factors, and you would kind of, you know, band-aid those by using the VAT system in those games. Starfield, with a ton of new weapons and a different altogether model, was something that I was really excited about coming into this game. And one of the things that wind up happening is you get into your first gun battle, you feel really excited about the process and then you come to those first initial AI layers and some of those are really hit or miss. Sometimes enemies are really smart. They will move, they'll flank, they'll hide behind cover. And at other times they will stand right in front of you and let you shoot them right in the face, which was a little disappointing to be honest from a game that is a next gen game, a game in which Bethesda's had lots of time to learn about some of the mistakes that they've made before, or at least some of the shortcomings of their combat systems. And it feels like it is still kind of hit or miss. You know, gunfights can either be really exhilarating or sometimes not that great. I think one of the things that's there is the reactions from the AI generated uh, enemies can sometimes feel like you're just shooting a bullet sponge. It feels like they are not really reacting in the ways that you would want to from a game of this caliber or from one that, to be honest, has some of the best gun models and gun variations I've ever seen from a Bethesda game. The gun models in this game, the ways you can outfit those guns, the ways you can mod them and make them different and feel different and shoot different and act different is really astounding. I think Bethesda has done something brilliant here that I can see having lots of legs and having multiple ways that you can outfit your guns and change the way that battles go. But it only really feels great in certain circumstances. And sometimes if the AI isn't really reacting in the way that you want, it takes away from some of the beauty that you get from some of these really awesome and really cool weapons that you see within the world. The other part of this that I think is really interesting is that one of the biggest potential complaints that I see people having would be, is third person combat actually viable in this game? And my answer to that would be actually, yes, I think 
third person combat in this game feels pretty good. You can tackle some fights in a lot of different ways. You know, you're used to playing these games in a first person mode and walking around in third person to kind of explore and get a vibe of the space. But in this game and in Starfield, shooting folks in third person feels really good. It's really nice to be able to fly up around and, and get into a fight, you know, get and look around corners with your third person view and actually feel like you're gonna hit things when you are looking at them with your reticle, which I think is pretty dope and I think is really fantastic for something that I had a, le a lot less expectation for in terms of the way that I thought it was gonna work. So, you know, kudos to the team for getting third person fighting to feel really good. The really crowding event and, and, and really crowning achievement for Starfield is space combat. Space combat is exactly where it needs to be. I think, sure, there are a couple of small incidents where, you know, you can play a little bumper cars with other ships if you're getting too close, but the lock-on system feels great. Being able to target specific systems to be able to disable parts of enemy ships feels really great. Once you've learned and kind of outfitted your ship with multiple different kinds of weapons that will attack those different systems uh, in different ways, in, in more effective ways feels really great. The ability to get a, a ship down to a certain level of health, you know, taking their shields down and then getting their uh, getting their uh, engines down to a, a lower level and then being able to potentially dock on some of those ships and board them and take those ships over is uh, something that I've not really experienced before. I, I feel like there are other games that do something similar, but I feel like, you know, them putting this small animation in between you boarding your ship and docking every time feels really epic. It does feel cool when you're able to say, I am taking your ship and I'm, I'm commandeering it or taking it over or, you know, blowing it up and having multiple ships while you're in a fight, fight at you and fight against you. Feels really cool. Like they have, gotten all those parts together and i feel like once you have people who have really decided on what kind of ship they want to build and what does that ship feel like and need to feel like in certain fights and how do you upgrade and how do you move different parts of your ship around to really feel like they're in the best spot to not only sh kind of shield them from enemy attack but also to be able to you know aesthetically look pleasing I think you'll find a really interesting mix there too to see how those systems interact in a way that feels like you are really in command of your ship. It, it feels like all of those pieces, when they fit together, it is one of the best pieces and parts of the Starfield feeling and the Starfield vibe and, and, and that understanding of what ship combat can be. So I would say, you know, if you're really digging into, you know, combat in this game, the stuff that's on the ground is a little bit okay. It's it's It has its moments when it feels great, but ship combat is exactly where it needs to be and where it's at, and I think that's where you'll get the most fun. One of the tent poles of the Starfield universe is exploration. I think one of the things that has gotten all of us so excited about this game is that feeling of role playing what it is like to be an explorer within space, to be able to jump in your ship and travel to a distant planet, to look at planets from afar and wonder what's on those planets from biomes to resources, to landmarks, to all of the cool things that you think of when you were in your Star Trek bag, when you were a young child, looking at some of those things and I think that Starfield does that extremely well I think what they talked about in the Starfield direct about the thousands of planets and being able to to jump into different solar systems and to see all of these different locales that you would be able to drop your ship onto the game does that in a really fantastic way. The universe does feel vast. It does feel interesting. It is beautiful. The planets that you will land on, even ones that are barren, because of the way that they've set up their lighting system, things look really, really cool. I landed on the moon once, the moon that is surrounding, you know, that is uh, rotating and, and, and revolving around the Earth, and it felt like I was on every picture of the moon that I've ever seen. You know, that stark white against the, the blackness of the universe was beautiful. It was serene. It was a moment that felt very, very special 
to be able to nail that. And Bethesda has done that across multiple planets, in multiple solar systems, in multiple parts of their world. And I think that they deserve a ton of kudos of, of really digging into their astro bag and, and, and getting into those spaces and really thinking about what will those experiences feel like when you land your ship on a planet? And it, and it does feel really cool every time you land a planet, land on a planet or, or, or leave a planet, you know, seeing your ship, you know, spark its engines and, and then go off into the cosmos. It does feel really cool every time you do it. So, again, they've, they've really nailed that part in a, in a big way. A lot of conversation has been about, well, the, the, the planets that are there, you know, besides the Goldilocks ones that, that Todd Howard had talked about, do they feel cool to be able to go on to? And the answer is, yeah, like. If you if you're really digging into and, and really paying attention to the idea of how do you play this game in a way that is not just how do I min max this is the way to play this game. This game is not a min maxing game. This is a game that you're supposed to take your time with is a game where you're kind of supposed to go and smell the roses of the universe and do that in all of those ways and take in you know what those systems are and especially because they're procedurally generated it makes even the the stories that you'll talk to your friends about which planet that you went to a little bit different and i feel like that is also just a really fantastic part of the exploration layer of this game um a, a small tip that i would tell you is you know a lot of folks in games like this the the idea of you know, jumping onto a planet and pulling out, uh, you know, your pickaxe basically and, and gathering resources seems a little bit boring, but I would tell you that it's a pretty ne uh, necessary thing to do. I would say it is a thing that at first sounds boring, but when you find a, a resource rich planet, you kind of want to hold on to them in some way. You want to try to remember how to get back to those things. You may want to even put an outpost on one of those so you can get back to that and kind of mark it in a way uh, because resources play a really big role in the, the exploration of this game and not only in the flora and fauna, but the, you know, the rocks and the minerals that you'll wind up finding within the space, all of those things matter in some form or fashion for what you're going to build in the future what you're going to look to build in the future because building takes a lot of resources uh and then you'll learn the intricacies of those small uh interlocking gameplay systems that that really will let you do that in a much more um convenient and and, and smart way uh, but when you're going to planets, you should be really checking on those and scanning those and doing that work to make sure that you're in the right spot for the time that you need to be. So those parts are are really, really good. And I would also say this is, again, one of those moments where going off the beaten path is fun, is smart. You'll find random things in random corners of the universe. I, I remember many, many times going off on a, on a non-mission and just going into a system and landing on a planet that was available and saying, well, what's here? And there would be either a really interesting and fun fight that I would get into, or I'd run into some new monster, or I would get a resource that I was really looking for, or I'd find something that was really valuable and I could sell it. So I'd get a lot of credits for when I wanted to build my new ship. All of those things make sense. I think they all do really play into the role play, you know, factor of this game. And when you're doing that, you're kind of recalling, you're like, oh, that planet was gorgeous because it had a tropical forest here and there was some water next to it and there were some mountains here. So you're thinking about that while also thinking about what is the atmosphere doing to my character? Is it too hot here? Is it, is it too much of a toxic gas cloud here? All of those things are factors into where you go, how you go and, and how far you'll go. Uh, of course, there are, uh, you know, parts of that that are determined by, you know, your ship and how far you can how far you can fly through your grav, your grav engine. But also even within that, there are ways to kind of maneuver within space that that feel smart and, and feel really good for the player. So exploration in terms of what Starfield is bringing, I think they've nailed it and I think they're doing a really great job. There are aspects of this review that are, are I wouldn't say missed, but I, and I wouldn't say glanced over. I would just say that they are small things that I feel like in the grand scheme of a game this big, I've given a pass to, but also understand and wished that those things were a little bit better. The character creator for one, I think could be better. Again, the models and textures in this game on the people 
are okay at, at some points. The lighting hits them in some good ways, and sometimes it doesn't, so it makes the models look a little bit weird and funky. Character creator, again, like you could have better hair in there. You could have some other things in that mix that that make those characters look a little bit better. Um, you know, I really do think that some of these systems, especially the ship builder and the outpost builder, could really have used a really full tutorial. I think there are so many fun pieces that you could play with, and it feels like a lot of that stuff got left on the table when it shouldn't have been, especially especially when they have been touted as some of the kind of most interesting layers of this game. I am a person who is hoping for a big patch at some point for quality of life stuff that will fix some of those things towards the, you know, middle or, or you know, ending of the year. So hopefully in or beginning of next year, we see more of those things come into play. And I think for the most part, the story itself has been great. I think, you know, a lot of folks are going to complain about, you know, how long the game is or, you know, maybe their faction wasn't given enough room to breathe or, you know, there are some conflicting things in the systems that work where you could be with a faction that has a rival and when you're in the same spaces, you can still kind of do things that the other rival camp would automatically, if you were thinking about it logically, would either stop you or keep you from doing those things or at least note some of those things in the conversations or in the interactions that you have. And Starfield, for some reason, doesn't do that often. It does it in very sparse ways and it doesn't do it fully. So it winds up giving you this kind of not broken experience, but it gives you an uneven one where you're like, well, I just did this really evil deed to this group of folks and now I'm working for them that doesn't make a lot of sense or you know there are things in the mix that that wind up happening and you're just like well that also doesn't make a lot of sense and there's also a layer of this too that i think bethesda has a formula and i think some of the pieces of the bethesda formula are okay but i feel like also when we're in a next gen scenario and we're thinking about the future of what games can be and we're seeing other games do some of these things well Things like conversation trees wind up being a thing that shows itself in a way that we already understand and know, but also could just be better. Like I understand now from a Bethesda, big, a Bethesda game that if you pick the first option in most conversation trees, that's probably the best option or the most kind of favorable one. I wish stuff like that would get kind of jumbled a, a little bit. Maybe give me some, throw some, throw some other stuff in there to make that a little bit more uh, difficult, or you know, give me more options to think about other routes that I can have conversations, even though there are some really cool ways to work work around some of that stuff. So, I think there there are interesting places in there that that work really well. I think there are some good bones on this game in a big way. I'm dying to see what DLC is going to be in this space, especially once you get to some of the later story bits and see where they're kind of going with some of this stuff. And again, you're working in a, in a whole big universe of a ton of different options of places and, you know, nebula and solar systems that you could open up. Like they could potentially with the fact that they have uh, a, a, a way of building some of these words procedurally, you could get a whole new hundred, you know, planets out in the world if they really wanted to do something like that. So I think that's going to be really awesome to see. I'm really excited to see what the modding community comes together with, especially on PC, because that's going to be really dope to see where that goes. There's a small thing of like land vehicles. I would have loved to have seen something like that in the game, too. Like you do travel on on foot a lot inventory winds up being a big problem in this game in a lot of different ways and it's a thing that you have to really account for and i think also the interactions between you and your companion could just be a little bit better i feel like some of those things also didn't get the full amount of love and they feel kind of antiquated even within this very new game that we see from bethesda again all of that to say i had a blast with this game i think this game is still phenomenal having a chance to play it both on xbox series x i don't think the 30 frames per second was an issue it looked really clean i had pretty pretty minimal bugs across both platforms i'm still waiting to see if if uh, the the pc version gets a widescreen option because i have a big 56 inch monitor for my pc i'm hoping that that gets put in for retail that was not in during during the initial parts of us playing and in, in, in that beginning a review copy so i'm hoping that that's going to be a thing that's in there as well and i think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is hearing how many folks had these really disparate 
experiences. You know, they, they talk about those water cooler moments all the time about how you can see something and then someone that you know saw something completely and totally different. What were the options that you got a chance to see and, and to get engage with as opposed to other folks who are doing the same same kind of quest? Those are the stories that I'm really excited about for, for this game and for Starfield. I think what Todd Howard and his team have done has definitely lifted and raised all boats. I think this is going to be something that they should be amazingly proud of. I think this is a game that they should be thinking about as a long-term game of how can we expand on this game and this universe in a much bigger and better way. And it gives me more places to think about what the future of games can be because they have thought about this game in such a huge and expansive way. So I'm really excited for that. I wanna thank all of you for checking out our review. I would give it a four out of five. What's ups? Gets a, gets a oh snap, a four out of five in terms of what that means for Starfield. And again, I think this is gonna be a game that I hope you really take the time to enjoy. I want you to really take your time with it. I think if you do that, you'll have a blast with it. And just let the haters be haters. Don't let them worry about you. Don't worry about them. Play your game, play it the way you want. Don't try to min-max this, and I think you'll have a blast of a time. So again, thank you so much for checking out our review. Much love to our friends over Bethesda for giving us a code for this early and letting us check it out. And thank you all for watching and listening to our review and all of the content that we do here at Spawn On Me. So much love to you all. Hope you have a wonderful week and peace.